So thank you. Uh, and I will now introduce our first speaker, which is uh, Maria Obok. Um, Maria Obok is an architect and uh, heritage professional whom I met last year during a um, garden restoration summer school that took place in uh, Flores Prahova at the Little Trianon Palace. Um, and the uh, summer school, which was organized uh, by the Cantacuzino Flores Foundation, Arha Association, and also ASOP uh, Romania. Um, Maria was born in uh, Vienna, and she is an architect, researcher, author, specializing um, in architecture. From 1999 to 2017, she has been a tenure professor at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich, um, professor at Roma 3, St. Ivan University Bud Budapest, Rhode Island School of Design, USA, lecturer at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, and guest professor at BOPU Vienna. Since 1985, together with uh, Janos Karas, head of um, Vienna-based landscape architecture studio, um, Albok and Karas, uh, realizing projects in several European countries, such as Austria, Germany, Italy, and Azerbaijan. Restoration projects for historic gardens, such as the ones at Belvedere Vienna, uh, a part of the UNESCO site of the center of Vienna, uh, Plantenum Blooming, uh, Hamburg, uh, private residences such as Villa Han uh, by Otto Wagner in Baden, and, and so on. She also coordinated research projects on landscape architecture and urban planning, conception and design of exhibitions concerning topics of landscape and nature. She is a member of several advisory boards for urban design, city planning, and art in public space um, in uh, Berlin, Vienna, Munich, and Salzburg and the jury member of international competitions in Austria, Germany, Italy, and Switzerland. Since 2017, she is the president of the Central Association of Architects of Austria. And in uh, 20, 2020, uh, actually a couple of months ago, uh, Maria received the Lifetime Achievement Awards uh, by the European Council of uh, Landscape Architecture Schools. Um, dear Maria Albuk, uh, it's very, uh, I'm very happy to to see you again and I'm very much looking for, forward to your uh, to your talk and now I give the floor to you. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you so much and a great introduction. I'm happy to be with you. I would be happy to be in Romania as a lockdown is hitting Europe all over. We have to stay safe and I would like to start my lecture quite away so you can use the afternoon I chose a topic that is uh, in, with our studio for some years already, but it is a, uh, a topic that concerns um, all of us how to preserve in large landscape architecture projects, quality and continui continuity. I like to present the convention and the in our point it's about a chance to uh, introduce you to an ongoing process of transformation in fact we uh, have that is the bill chair yeah thank you so eyeing it, is it okay? Can you, can you, uh, do you see the picture? Okay, so I go on speaking and if anybody feels I had to stop, please stop me. <laughs> Thank you for this lecture, but I understood it's like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, so I want to overgrow. Thank you, Eric. So, when I weiter, I click, yeah, okay. Oh, no, 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 that is a city beyond the city. In fact, you see a photo from 1907, from 1913, that shows the psychiatric hospital that at that time was the largest in the world, Steinhof in Vienna. Only a couple of years later, Chicago overtook. You see the major church on the hill, and you see the pavilion buildings in a very modern idea at that time to keep patients in landscape. The site has a, a, a complete of 
hospital use a new uh, chance to convert the site into a campus for university. And it will be used in future in 2025 by several universities, one of them JU University from Budapest. You see the landscape, it is on the west, uh, uh, northwestern part of our city of Vienna. You see that we have an outbranching out of the Viennese woods. And in the southern border of this Viennese woods area, there is the hospital with the church on the hill and the cultural axis in the center. I like to go. Oh, now in researchers, we are planners, we are these landscape architects, and we used to work for this site for several years in the way of uh, maintaining the qualities and developing footpaths and uh, pavilion uh, adjunct areas. And for this, we have to ask, how can we read monuments of garden history and how can we protect them? By analysis of the cultural impact and by comparison of artistic qualities of space and content of the special programmatic issues. In this case, there is a very strong sentence in German, den ärmsten das schönste. This means in English, provide the most beautiful site for the poorest of them all, for the one patient that has with mental diseases an need of protection. So we compared the historical plants and the existing vegetation and use. And for this, we went on site and we compared the photos of 1926 and today. And we researched the plants of 1904, you will see in a moment. And we compared alterations for plants of today. So we have also to compare the change of the use, the functionality. Therapy in 1905 was completely different then. And of course, students and student campus today will have another uh, use for the buildings. So I uh, rush through some of the starting events and I will provide some information about the famous architect Otto Wagner, who created the church. And then I will show you some plans of our vegetation analysis. And I hope that you will enjoy this. And by the last hundred years exists today. It's a pavilion system in a dense park like area. The garden structures nearly gone complied a very formal in impact of plant use. In fact, the many uh, pinus you see here are uh, planted only later when the city of Vienna overtook the site. It used to be planted in a very rich, colorful, uh, deciduous trees. And uh, I will tell you more later. So we understand and we have to remember to keep memories. In fact, history of a hospital of psychiatric use in 20th century also was very hardship full. And for this, there is a monument, is a memorial Spiegelgrund, because in third world uh, in third reich in uh, second world war times there were experimental uh, issues that hundreds of children died in these pavilions unfortunately till today we have to research on this yeah so we have to develop new content before the dereliction continues so there is a very good book out I can recommend, and the title you see here by Professor Blackholm from Technical University Vienna, who actually documents the history of the planning phase, the uh, comparison of uh, psychiatric um, asylums in a Austro-Hungarian monarchy at that time, and the long way of the hundred years of 20th century historical change. Actually, I 
I go on to the professors of fine art at the Academy of Fine Art in Vienna. In his life, he decided on several very important issues in the city to even uh, creating the Stadtbahn buildings, which is the subway system of our city. But actually, he was famous for starting projects by issuing them. And one was also the church, which we will say, see later. But I like to put your interest on his work for landscape architects, important to know. He felt to be very uh, uh, knowledge about public design. So the creation of these two projects I just start is like the um, quarter um, uh, park for the second uh, 22nd district in Vienna and uh, uh, a new campus for Academy of Fine Arts on Schmelz. Both of them merely projects, but they already show a very um, decided geometric uh, urban layout. And in his books, which you see here, the Baukunst unserer Zeit, the um, building art of our time, he was very critical on the uh, landscape architects of his time. He felt it was overdone and there were too much flowery ideas around. He needed strict spaces. So this is uh, just to get started with to see how his private home looked like on the left down the two photos you see his daughter sitting there and uh, so there is a use of uh, shrubs and trees in his own villa garden so this is a continuity of maybe conflict and discussion but in fact in real life uh, a lover of gardens himself mr wagner he creations for the church and we fight. In fact, the main drawing in the center is the layout of the arrival zones, the zones for the pavilions, and you see also a symmetrical uh, layout with beach uh, at the northern part of the church and poplar trees uh, on both sides, or be it oak trees, maybe it's uh, columnary oak um, alongside the north-south uh, walks. Today, overgrown, you can't see the church from below. But that was it. Actually, uh, um, Professor Wagner, he won the competition and he won the layout to over a work layout for whole uh, little. This was the first idea of Mr. Carlo von Bog. You see it is done in the 19th century style of rather topography. And this is Mr. Goldemund, the urban planner of the city of Vienna, reworked the design of Otto Wagner. So the terraces are geometric now, and you see a very architectonic idea of um, uh, wings for the women and wings for the men of the pavilion gardens. And the green area on the left, that was the area where you had to pay. It was for the better the classes here for the lung diseases, uh, so the called pulmology or sanatorium. It's very important. So in the north, the yellow area are fruit gardens. It's also on the right, you see uh, some of the um, workspaces, the pink buildings on the right are The um, Wagner Spital is on the top right. You see the client. It was a politician from the county of Lower Austria. And on the right side, you see Mr. Wagner with his fine dress. But the real important the down left side is Mr. Wagner. He was the guy who actually built with his team, has exist of all the architecture. The his team realized plan how the site and landscape structure was envisioned. For us and for landscape architects, important, they had their own garden center, top north. It's a little cut. It's the Wirtschaftsgebäude, and they had houses for the indoor plants, for indoor green, and they had the 
project was to keep the patients who are active, active in garden work. So the patients were part of the maintenance team to keep this park-like area working. Um, while we are um, helping with the technical issues, uh, I would like to ask all of you who are watching to think about questions to, to ask when we will uh, finish this first presentation. So um, if you have any, just add them to the Facebook uh, page. I, I am uh, again on the site of Vienna. Is this okay for you? Yes? Yes. So I, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I will keep my, I have to go real quick now to tell you more about this site. So about the axis is of the Royal Palace, but I go on with the plans of uh, urban structure with park in the south of this hospital. And you see now the aerial view you see now the aerial view of 1908 and how each of was really grim um, excuse me again, Mrs. Albert. Um, yeah. There, I think there are some internet connections. Uh, to have a more smooth connection, I propose you turn off your camera so you leave only the sound on and the PowerPoint. It, okay. it may be. Yes, it I think it should be better. Thank I you. hope so. Most of the Zoom is like uh, working without the camera better, better. I just go on speaking, yeah? But tell me, Alex, what's going on? He's a real good mediator. I'm, I'm thank you for Alex Maxi helping us. <laughs> thank so, you, it's perfect. I just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although for all the technical issues, uh, I think we're having a great uh, presentation about how hospital ensembles uh, yeah. in Vienna uh, are, are a topic that might be discussed in the world of landscape architecture and how a restoration not only of a garden but also of a built ensemble such as this one is very important for the job we, we are doing landscape architects or part mm -hmm. of the jobs we are doing. So again, uh, anyone who has any question um, that might relate either to the restoration of urban design uh, mm -hmm. of uh, built ensembles or of garden heritage, I, I urge you to, to yeah, put it on uh, Facebook. So uh, please do not hesitate to ask. And again, we are sorry for all the technical difficulties, but uh, I think uh, we will solve them uh, very soon. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Is it okay? So I just like to uh, use the short time that's left to give you some images about that the landscape was park-like around 1905 thought. And that this was the poster which they sent out for the rich patients to pay because the rich patients made the whole uh, of the hospital work. Yeah? So this pe uh, post is like looking for a tourist agency for a psychiatric uh, asylum, make a nice charming stay in this place. But it was actually the uh, cash cow for the whole of the site. Yeah. So this is the site in 1940, and still you see exactly the site of the gardens, the landscape, the paths organized. And later, I like to show now that the psychiatrist doctors had their ideas for plants for the quiet patients and the aggressive patients. So this text, which I include for Mrs. Mara Reisberger, she found this text in the original documents. It explains exactly what kind of botanical selection consoles your mind. 
So this is some of the plants you can see now. It is Calicanthus, it is Cornus florida, it is Citisus. So 1905, the idea was for consolation to have the smell, to have the colorful leaf, to have the flowery plant. All of the LAs were thought of to be of linden trees, of um, maple, even birch trees they used. And it is interesting to see that over the last 80 years, most of the flowery plants disappeared because maintenance was low. So some of the materials and details are very interesting. They form the consistency on the side of the public sites and the streets and the stairs are very unique, as you can see on the photos in the style of Arnovo. Now, when we look at the use, there was a change in the 1926 in the idea of the plant use and the doctors thought that uh, the production of um, ozone will be by uh, conifers. So implantation of pinus and pizzea and abies started and so many, many, many influences happen now to have a rather consistent um, uh, conifer landscape. At that time, it's interesting to see that the patients at work on the photo are bright. And you see that there was a little streetcar for the distribution of the food and also of the linen. As you see, their patients worked even in the washing of the linen. The patients' uh, buildings were at that time thought to be modern to have uh, patients' rooms of a 12 to 20 patients, imagine, it's completely out of today. But this is now the garden department. They had a glass house, they had a garden director, and they had their own uh, station for the maintenance work for the large park areas. So the research goal, as I said, was the analysis of the vegetation on site, the analysis of the archive material, and a synthesis of the proposition of renovation. For this, we have to say that for us, it's the time of the 1908, which is the really the major time for this. And we call it also light fossil in German. That is like the major level of historical quality. And this is the plan, the only plan that we found with the garden sites on. It's actually the switch system plan, but it again, it shows exactly how the path systems worked at that time. So we made our analysis and here you see now the synthesis of our vegetation analysis that the alleys west east were consistent of conifers trees, the alleys north south were consistent in color and in type. So you could for orientation see that they had their own stru structural idea. And then the park uh, uh, around the church you see has changed completely into a very wooded area today. And the yellow uh, like vanilla colored garden sites are most of them today trees, nearly no undercover. So when we did this uh, um, vegetation analysis, we made very opulent plants. As you can imagine, the colors mean botanical speciality. So the blue and the pink is a special, like they had Polovnia groups, or they had this um, special Tzertzis, where the pink is, for your information only, the yellow is Arza Saccharinum today, the yellow trees along up the church. And the same is now with the pavilion gardens. Here we have also some special botanical issues. Most of the trees today are um, uh, castania, that is uh, uh, hippocastanum, I mean, and uh, uh, of course the linden again and the, the beech. And also solitaire groups, as I said, of the Tertis or the Polovnia are really strong in some of these gardens. And this is the wooded area, which is more or less happening also by the growth of the conifers over the years. 
So this was the issue we had and we wanted to uh, reconstruct and we wanted to adapt. And so we want to keep this very rigid uh, landscape uh, grid and we want to connect in a network the given uh, uh, vegetation and new plantations. And for this uh, is the synthesis again uh, to be seen, the conceptual sketch. And uh, now the use was a big discussion for the last 20 years. Will it be housing in cluster? Will it be campus for research and housing? Or will it be the campus of the JU University Budapest? Will it be cultural events? Or will it be a medicine for wellness and prevention of diseases? So the discussion is ongoing still, but we know today that JU University will take over about 50% of the site and the other will be maybe start up research institutes. So I just try to compare with another competition. It's by Carla Law. She won the University Re uh, Vienna competition of the renovation of the existing Baroque structures. She did it in a magnific magnificent way. And you can see on this poster how she re enhances the old university into the new university campus in downtown Vienna. Or a project we did for uh, Gleichenberg, which is a spa, and we tried to implement a, a, a communal theater, open space theater, musical uh, for concerts, musical plays into the combination of a, a spa a village with hotels, restaurants, and a, a concert hall. So we think that the program and the timetable for this is going to have more future in 2025, maybe 1500 students will take over to uh, have their ab ability to study and use the campus for their work. And so I hope that in future, when we look at all these, uh, it will be again a happy place and a good place to study. So here you see about how the dormitories and the JU University are working. I hope that with my conceptual sketches, I give some dream of how life will return to this nearly empty and quiet space today. And I thank you that you listen, but if you need my PowerPoint, I can offer it for you and your listeners and the whole group also by sending the PowerPoint to you. I finish now with my issues that are, um, we have to uh, make a definition of public and semi-public spaces. We have to keep sites open for the public to visit and enjoy. We have to give easy access for the dormitories. And we will have to have protection of garden monument areas and of the sensible landscape zones. So for this, we are about now with colleagues in a teamwork to redefine integration of maybe sport and playground, maybe kindergartens and gastronomy. And for this, it is really important to find qualifications for the open space use and above all, the survival of the atmosphere of this landscape. So it's like a change, it's a change, yeah? But it has to keep quality and it has to keep activity sites. So we will work on, and I just thank you for listening to me. And this is my presentation today. Thank you very much. It was, as usual, a great pleasure to, to hear you uh, presenting about uh, cultural landscapes, restoration, uh, historical sites. And uh, although we had this uh, technical issues, I think it was a great presentation. And on behalf of everyone who, who watched, I would like to thank you. Um, we already uh, received some questions. And if possible, um, well, we would allow to have 15 minutes uh, for the Q&A uh, session. Um, I already have a couple which I would like to, to ask you. And I also ask everyone who is watching to put to write any questions you would like to on the Facebook page. Uh, I would begin with uh, the following question. Um, is the job of a landscape architect 
or restorator backed up by proper legislation probably it uh, it refers to austria um the one the uh, the the ones who asked this question continued by saying i assume that not everyone can deal with a restoration project and what are the phases that make up a successful restoration project uh can you hear me is it okay yeah can i answer well, uh, according to uh, many countries in Europe, I uh, have to report that we are still in Austria in the phase of, um, uh, let's call it überzeugung in German. It's um, a, a, a phase of ke keeping track with all other professions in the uh, preservation of monument department that still today we don't have the real support by legal advice for uh, um, restoration issues. In our um, uh, law, uh, uh, Austrian preservation of monuments law, only 57 uh, sites are uh, protected and it is not that this site I presented is protected. So it needs a lot of convin uh, convincing people, convincing the uh, in, uh, in charge of the site, the, um, the, the responsible um, persons in, on site, they know the value, they know how to uh, preserve it. And I'm happy to say that in this year, 2020, the city of Vienna is more aware than in 2010 and then more aware than in 2000. So it's a process of uh, answering this question quickly. I hope I hope for Romania that you find fine legal support, which is missing in Austria. Well, we hope so too, and also to have specialists in uh, in in what concerns the uh, restoration of cultural landscapes and historic gardens. And uh, to this end, I would refer to to one question which is um, what are the phases that make up um, a good restoration project, a successful one? Thank you. I should have answered right away. This was the second question. I, I just like to say um, it is useful to spread the word that it needs proper documentation. And the research in some aspects has to be paid by the public or has to be paid by uh, Secretary of Culture. I just recommend that this is really important to have enough documentation material available because like 10 years ago, I mentioned the Department of Monument said we don't have uh, manpower, we don't have money for documentation, we just can decide. We cannot do research, we don't have the um, back up offices for this, we just decide. But it's not good to make decisions without proper knowledge. Therefore, I'm a very much aware that we need enough research in landscape history, in garden art, to go on with a preservation of gardens. Well, First step. And the second step is then, of course, to bring law and to bring the clients or the owners of the sites into maybe receiving funds, maybe supporting funds, but giving uh, like some sort of um, attraction to restoration. How can be uh, attractive funding help to restore? Well, you have uh, my first and biggest thank you for for uh, saying about document documentation because this is a very big lack we have in in Romania and you've seen it in the Floresht. We have a big lack in the documentation of historical landscapes and gardens, and it's very important for a restoration project. Um, I would like to ask you another question uh, from the ones uh, that are following us. Uh, and that is, are there any research, recent research regarding species that can be used in relationship to hospital sites? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for this question. I think that uh, in my uh, vision or in, in the close uh, studio work, I'm aware that we have complete new aspects for poison and non-poisonous plants, like for the kindergartens and for the playgrounds, but also for all kind of sensitivity. Uh, um, I don't know if it's good 
to speak about the skin, but it's all these kind of diseases that are aggressive uh, concerning with plant use. The researches are out, but with the preservation of garden uh, monuments, it needs another, like a, a second and a third layer of control which plants to use. So in, in our Austrian projects, we have to be aware what are the local laws, what are the local, uh, the, the so-called poison lists in, in dialect spoken that we have research out, yes, for this. And there is a more and more issue I would like to add, and that's climate change. Garden history monuments have a great, great issue how to react to climate change. And for this, I wanted to tell you that there, two years ago, there was a, a quite interesting convention in Berlin, and they printed a book about historical gardens in climate change. And it really is uh, good to order. You can get it from uh, the Schlösser Verwaltung Brandenburg. Yes. Thank you. Um, what is the impact of improper, um, uh, by, um, sorry, what is the impact um, of projects which are not uh, made by specialists in this kind of uh, in this kind of uh, restoration project what what kind of impact improper impact on economy and on cultural heritage uh, do you want uh, me to rephrase this question yes please so uh, what is the economic and cultural impact generated by a project carried out by non-specialists we, we tend to have this in Romania and this kind of um, a question, a, a Romanian question, so to say. Yes, uh, I, I, I try to say, uh, just imagine that this uh, grid system is changed for a loop for the cars, for the more easygoing uh, bicycle trail. Well, the impact would be that you have a, a quicker access to the pavilions but uh, the loss of the landscape structure. And uh, so I, I, I am confronted in my own country, uh, sometimes with rather chopping down uh, hedges and preparing um, building sites, emptying the building site from the content of the landscape because it's cheaper to build without uh, the given uh, plant situation and uh, so on. But the impact is, in, in English, it's difficult for me to spe speak. We are all in a capitalistic system now, but this is now the system is, is it the Mehrwert? Is it the Tauschwert or is it the Gebrauchswert? That is in German. What is the value? Is it the value of the emotion? Is it the value of exchange? Or is it the value of profit? And if we think about this, our profession is linked to something that is open to all, is public luxury, yeah? Luxury and beauty for all without costs. So if we think about this is a strong question, a good question, but we have to go on discussing it. We can't do it in a, in a small answer question period like this. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, for your answer. I think it was actually very great and very inspiring. Um, I'm now looking to see if there are any other questions. Um, for now, I don't see any. Um, I would like to ask you, uh, what did you find most interesting about the gardens and landscapes you've seen in Romania? And what do you ah. think should be done uh, as, as a strategy for a proper maintenance and a proper restoration of what you've seen. Well, thank you for this uh, profound question. Of course, I am um, more on the positive side of optimism and hoping that each country in Europe has to define its role in uh, culture and landscape architecture and garden art are very important for Romanian culture to support it and to go on in the preservation would mean also to know more about the own history of the country's history. So some of the uh, monarchy's time or some of the Republican time can be criticized, but the lots of the villa gardens and the parks 
I've seen in Bucharest, but also in uh, other cities like Cluj and so on. I, I, I share a lot with the quality of European standards. So I think there is an issue of transcultural uh, conversion of uh, French landscape architects working in Romania or British, but it's also the Romanian and the German speaking population that contributed a lot. And I think this would be so important to upkeep and to go on to understand that it's part of our urban design landscape. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Albok.